and today we are going to make the travel jacket that Elsa wears in Frozen 2. Now I'm making a different video about the dress that she wears underneath. This video only focuses on the jacket that she wears over top the dress. I can choose fabric and items that is a lot stronger than all of the cheap dress ups that you buy at the store. Upcycling is also easier than making it from scratch because you can reuse a lot of item, a lot of parts of the um, clothing, which makes it so you have to sew less things. So let me show you the supplies that you'll need for the project. You're going to need a blue button up shirt. This is just a men's button up shirt. I love using men's button up shirts because you can always find them. There's plenty. They are strong cotton and you know, they're usually really good quality. Sometimes you can get the ones that don't wrinkle. Also, you need it to be blue. When I went to the store, I found tons of blue shirts. It was not hard to find blue. And this is a men's medium, but it doesn't really matter what size. I am making the travel jacket for a size four little girl. The other thing I got is this is a sheer curtain, just like a curtain panel. And these are great because all the sides are already finished. You can always find curtains. There's always curtains. I mean, when I went and I found this sheer one, I think there were three or four right next to each other at the same time, which is fantastic that you can always find them. So we're going to use this for part of the jacket. And this one's pretty big. I'm going to have to cut it down, but it's still going to work. If you are you doing it for um, a woman or a teenager, then, you know, a curtain panel is the perfect size. So to do all the details on Elsa's jacket, she has that beaded shoulder and she has beading on the edge of her sleeve right here. She might even have beading at the bottom of her jacket. Um, I got, this is iron on vinyl, it's Cricut, but it's iron on mesh. So do you see how there's holes in the iron on vinyl? So I'm gonna cut the shapes like diamonds and like the angular shape of the shoulder out of this. So the holes in the iron on vinyl will make it look like it's beaded. It will give it texture and depth and I won't have to do any hand sewing or um, beading. That's why I'm using this. So you can technically do beading and embroidery if you want. I'm taking the easy way out. That's why I'm upcycling. I'm using iron on vinyl. I'm going for things that are quick and easy that will last a long time, but I'm not going for accuracy. The last thing I got is, this is a beaded trim. I found this at Joanne Fabrics and it's just some blue and white beads that is on a trim. This was not super cheap. Um, it is more expensive than I usually like to um, spend on something, but Elsa's jacket is beaded at the bottom and I did not want to do any beading. So the first thing you need to do is take the collar off of the top of the shirt. So. I'm using a seam ripper and I'm actually seam ripping. I'm leaving the collar stand, but I'm opening the top of the collar stand so that I can take the collar piece out. So I will sew that up later. And then I took off the tags, um, the clothing tags on the back. I think they're a little bit itchy and I know my daughter would get bothered by that. So I decided to remove those also and make it a lot smoother and softer in the back. Then I removed all of the buttons from the front of the shirt. I just used a seam ripper and pulled them all off. Make sure you save at least one that we will be using later um, at the, in the project. Then take off the cuffs from the sleeve. This is similar um, to removing the collar from the stand where you're opening up that seam so that you can pull the cuff off. Then remove the pocket from the front. We are doing a little bit of deconstructing of the shirt so that we can use the details that we want. It's great to be able to reuse the details, but there's often details you have to cut off or um, seam rip. Next, I took my scissors and I just cut the sleeves off 
It doesn't matter if you're cutting through the sleeve or through the shirt since you are going to be um, remaking the bodice. You just need to cut both sleeves off so that it you can open the shirt up and so that you can um, cut open the sleeves and reuse them to cut the new sleeves. Next you need to Cut the sleeves open through the seam allowance all the way through so that you can open them up flat. Next, you are going to close that open seam at the top by just sewing a top stitch, stitch around the top of the collar stand. Then cut a straight, cut the curve of the shirt tail hem off so that you have a straight hem. Then use one of your daughter's dress or you can use an actual paper pattern and you are going to cut the skirt off. So this is about um, how long I want the skirt to be. And then I used the bodice as a guide to cut out the bodice. Since this is a woven, I would recommend giving yourself extra room. My jacket does fit my daughter but it's a little tighter than I wanted. It still fits her, it's just she's going to grow out of it quicker. After I cut one side, I fold the bodice in half so that I can get the exact same cut on the other side and that way I will have a symmetrical bodice instead of two um, different measurements on each side. So here I'm showing how I sew the sides <clears throat> of the bodice together first and I pinned that side and I pinned the other side and then I actually went back later and added iron on vinyl to the shoulders which I forgot about so to make it easier I would recommend adding any beading or iron on vinyl to the shoulders first before you um, sew it together and learn from my mistakes so you don't do the same thing you need to seam rip the pleats of the sleeves so that you can get those sleeves nice and flat. Put them right sides together and you can either use a paper pattern or you can use the sleeve of a long sleeve shirt, the sleeve to um, cut out the new sleeve. Remember if you are doing uh, since you're using a woven shirt you need to make sure you have a lot of room for movement since it won't stretch then you since I'm doing a point at the sleeve I cut out a facing for the sleeve that matched the sleeve point and that way um, you can get the point of the sleeve but it's easier than hemming you know the point you can just sew the facing on Then I got out my iron on vinyl. This is the mesh version I talked about at the beginning of the video with the holes in it. And instead of actually using a cutting machine because I'm, you know, using the shape of a sleeve, I thought it would be a little tricky to put that into the cutting my cutting software. So for the line up the sleeve, it looks like Elsa has some sort of detail that is a straight line up the sleeve. I just used a cutter, like a paper cutter, and I cut a quarter inch piece of the iron-on vinyl, and that's what I used to go up vertically on the sleeve, and it actually worked really well. I like how it looks. It almost looks like it's like rickrack or something, so that was that worked really well for this. Then I just decided to cut out some um, geometric shapes with my scissors and it's not perfect, but it actually works pretty well for, it works with the sleeve shape and I was able to make it pointy and geometric like Elsa's shoulders and this worked really well for me. If you don't have a cutting machine and you just buy iron on vinyl, then you can actually use this method and it would work just as well. Then I used my small Easy Press 2 to apply the iron on vinyl and it went on great. It was perfect since I was using um, a nice fabric from the shirt and I didn't have any problem peeling off the plastic backing. Then I actually used my Easy Press to apply 
interfacing to the sleeve facing. I love using the Easy Press 2 for little things like this since it was already out and hot. So now you can see I'm cutting pieces for the shoulder, but it's a little tricky since I sewed the side seams. I should have left the bodice flat and open so that it would be easier to cut out these pieces and apply the iron-on vinyl. I did some on the front and the back and they're both kind of triangle geometric shapes. And you can see that I have the bodice um, kind of wrapped around the um, the mat, the Easy Press 2 mat. So it is a little tricky. So then you're going to baste two rows of stitches to the top of the skirt. You want two rows so that you have um, beautiful gathering. It's easier to control it and it looks a lot better when the gathering is has two rows to distribute it evenly. So you're going to gather the skirt and then pin it to the bodice with the front button placket um, matching up and then match up your side seams and you know distribute your gathers evenly throughout the skirt so that it matches up with your bodice. After you get the skirt gathered, then you can sew the skirt to the bodice and just do a straight stitch and um, the gather should be distributed evenly so it should sew perfectly. You need to tack the seam allowance at the front, you know, by the button placket. You'll need to tack it up so that it doesn't get in the way. I sewed the facing onto the bottom of my sleeves. So I trimmed the point so that you reduce the bulk inside of that sleeve and then I cut the facing seam allowance to be slightly smaller than the sleeve seam allowance and it helps reduce that bulk and gives it a nice clean point and a clean edge. Then I sewed the side seam of the sleeve and I went down through the facing so that when I turn it right side out you can see that the facing will fit nicely right inside and the point you can you know put something in to poke out the point to make it look nice but it's much easier than small sewing a small hole at the hem of this tiny sleeve it's much easier to do the facing and then do the whole side seam I decided to add top stitching around the facing at the bottom of the sleeve to help keep that facing in place and it wouldn't pop out. It's easier than adding understitching. Then you're going to pin your sleeve into the you're going to pin your sleeve into the shoulder of your jacket. So you're going to pin both sleeves right side together. You match up the seam allowance at the bottom and then you know distribute your sleeve around. If you're using a pattern this is an easy your shape should fit in just perfectly. If you have your sleeves sewn on then you can see that beautiful shoulders with all of the faux beading and the beautiful details. The next thing you need to do is sew a hem on the skirt. I just did a quarter inch double fold hem to get a tiny little hem at the bottom and I just did a top stitch. Then you need to use your beading, you grab your beading trim and you're going to sew it onto the hem. You can add a facing if you want to cover up that trim on the inside. I decided to just sew it right on top and you can see it on the inside but I think it looks just fine. It actually looks like a facing and it doesn't bother me. Then you're going to sew the cuff closed, the one that you took off and kept. Once it's sewn closed, you can cut another little piece of iron-on vinyl that will be fused to this little piece. This is the belt piece that Elsa wears across the front of her jacket. So I just cut a geometric kind of triangle shape that it was kind of wide and short to fit on this cuff. And it's great to be able to reuse the cuff for the belt instead of making a new belt from scratch.
Next, you're going to fuse the iron-on vinyl onto the belt and um, use the same settings that you used before and then peel off the plastic backing. I also cut some strips of silver mesh iron-on vinyl just the way I did the sleeves. I cut a bunch of strips and I did some triangle shapes along the bottom for the beading on the bottom that I didn't have to bead. Then you're going to cut two pieces of your curtain and um, it should be about the height of the dress. I did have to finish one side but I reused two finished edges, finished one side and then the other side is going to be gathered and sewn to the top of the jacket on the shoulder. So first you sew it when the um, cape is pointing up and then you fold it down and top stitch it in place. Once that is in place, you sew the belt on on one side, the one that doesn't have a buttonhole, and then the side that does have a buttonhole, you will add a little button so that it can be buttoned on um, from the side. And that's how you get the jacket on and off. And you have a beautiful jacket that is strong and well made. And you didn't have to do many details because you upcycled. Um, I can't wait to see your beautiful Elsa dresses from Frozen 2. I hope you have a wonderful day.